I'm Scott Moore. I um, majored uh, in math at Furman University. Then I got an MBA at Georgia Tech. Then I got a PhD at uh, Wharton. And then for 20 years, I was at the University of Michigan Ross School of Business um, faculty and then head of the undergraduate business program. And then I was dean uh, at Babson College. And for the last four and a half years, I've been working at Extension Engine, uh, talking to presidents, provosts, deans about uh, going online. And I'm Cynthia Castro. I'm the provost at Moravian College. I've been there about five years. Um, my academic background is in classical archaeology and classical history and philology, and I went all state schools. I'm at here at a little private liberal arts school now, but I started at Montana State University for my undergraduate degree. I got a couple of master's degree at the University of Minnesota, and then my PhD at the University of Illinois. And I then went on to work at a moderate-sized public institution um, in Arizona in Flagstaff at NAU. And I moved from there, 20,000 undergraduate students, to Moravian College, which I'll tell you a little bit more uh, in detail about in a minute. But it's different. Uh, it's different. Yeah, it's <laughs> considerably different. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what we're going to talk today is this is mostly going to be Cynthia talking, since that's the name on the program, right? Um, and telling the story of their um, uh, their journey. And so it's pretty straightforward. We're going to start in the past, go to the present, and shockingly enough, going to go to the future after that. So it's pretty pretty easy to follow along. So Moravian College. Uh, Moravian College is a really different kind of school than the one I came from um, prior to that time. Um, like I said, I've been there just about five years. Uh, so I think that makes me, I'm like hitting the average for provost lifestyle or life, right? Yeah. Um, we are a um, very mission-driven institution. In fact, our mission is, um, I'll, I'll say it for you because I'll come back to it a couple of times as we're talking. Moravian College's liberal arts education prepares each individual for a reflective life, fulfilling careers, and transformative leadership in a world of change. Mm -hmm. And those words um, and the way that we deal with those words um, have a lot to do with how we uh, develop and work with our curriculum, um, uh, our access to students, what, you know, what we hold um, dear, and also led us to join um, the New American Colleges and Universities group, and we have a couple of representatives from there, thank you guys, um, because they really also embody that mission of um, both liberal arts education, professional career development, um, and civic engagement and engagement with, the, um, with their society. We have a long, long history at Moravian College. We're the sixth oldest college in the country. Uh, it was founded in 1742, um, primarily to uh, educate girls uh, to start with. Um, it expanded to boys in 1743, um, and then it was, um, and it grew from there. In the 1950s, the two colleges, the girls' college and the men's college, combined to be a co-educational facility um, and combined with the seminary as a separate graduate program. So really throughout our history, um, as soon as graduate programs start to appear, um, we were participating in those as well. So we integrate the liberal arts with these um, liberal arts and sciences with our professional studies um, and our civic engagement. Um, content is important, but skills have also been very important for us. Uh, it's not that we don't have many faculty who are interested in knowledge for knowledge's sake and building you know, a, a, you know, a better human being in that way, um, but learning stuff, being able to do stuff with it has been very important to us. We've been very engaged uh, since I've been there and since the president, Brian Grigsby, has been there in technology. We're an Apple school, so every single one of our students gets a Mac book like this and an iPad. Mm -hmm. Every one of our faculty has one as well, and most of our staff um, have them too. So everybody is walking around with the same equipment, um, and this is, I think, really important for the, what we're talking about today. We're both forward thinking then, but also very deeply um, engaged in our past. We talk a lot about the sort of founding ideas. The founding ideas for us have came out of a particular educational approach um, exemplified by Comenius, and Comenius was a European educator um, around the 1600s, and he was interested in um, educating all, uh, rich and poor, um, young and old, men and women. And so that has been part of our ethos uh, for 
however many years that is now, since 1742, um, a lot, a lot of years, uh, 278. Yeah, technically yeah. that's a lot. That Technically a lot, exactly. Um, we have s about 1,800 undergraduates, uh, roughly 400 graduate students on our campus at this time, and not as many adult completion students yet as we would like, but working with them, we're hoping to, to change that um, as well. We're located in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and we are in the Lehigh Valley region. That's about an hour north of Philadelphia um, and about an hour more or less west of New York, so it's beautifully situated for all kinds of things. Um, we have uh, several master's degrees. We have one doctoral program at present. We're working on um, others. Um, we now have a very fully online program and uh, a second one that's um, almost fully online. That's the DAT program that I'll talk about later. Um, we're also an Apple Distinguished School. Uh, in addition to having these um, iPads, we, we won that designation from Apple. Uh, and this is something I always want everybody to know. We are the national home of the National Honor Society for First Generation College Students. If you have questions about that, that's separate from this. But it's also um, a really uh, important thing that we have uh, done. We founded it um, at Moravian College Tri Alpha. Uh, we're also one of the 30 schools in Pennsylvania to have received the designation as a National Guard friendly school. So I think you can see there um, all of those things uh, combined to give you a sense, I think, of our mission and, and who we are. Super. All right, so um, now with uh, that's who you are, and now let's talk about the, your process, your journey. It was a journey. Um, <laughs> so I came from uh, NAU, as I mentioned, and we started extended campuses uh, in around 1990 there. Um, when I arrived at Moravian College, we did have a few classes that were online. Um, but there was definitely a resistance to the very notion of online teaching. That n the idea of liberal arts education was one that um, really felt to the faculty at the time as it had to be face to face. There was no other alternative. So we had a few courses online. Um, we actually had rules against um, online uh, use of online for certain things. For example, uh, in my very first year on the um, promotion and tenure committee when we were doing um, teaching evaluations, looking at the teaching evaluations, that part of the portfolio, I noticed that everybody's portfolio looked different. Some people had tables, some people had narrative, um, the numbers didn't seem to match. I, I really couldn't figure out what was going on and I asked, I said, so w w how do we compare across colleagues or across departments? And the group said, well, well we don't. And I said, well, how is it that, I mean, how are these numbers being entered into the system here? There is no system, I was told. I said, well, so what's happening? So here's what's happening. You do your student evaluation, the student does. They hand it to the professor afterwards. The professor collected them in a pile and then took them back to their office and inputted the information themselves. They either did it as a table or they did it as a narrative. Um, but oh my goodness, uh, that's not what I said. Uh, but it was really, really a surprise to me. So I recognized really early that we had a lot of work to do. That was the first thing I did, uh, was convince the Promotion and Tenure Committee that this was not a healthy way um, for anybody to run an evaluation system or an assessment system. Um, and so we began to move towards an online student evaluation form and process, which is fully implemented now. So that was the first thing. Um, the second thing was we didn't really have any kind of system. Uh, when I got there, we had Blackboard. About six months after I got there, we would switched over to Canvas or agreed to switch over to Canvas, which has been um, better for us. Um, and stu the faculty then would use these for online or hybrid things um, as they chose. It was will willy-nilly. We had some summer courses, a few online summer courses. Around that same time, uh, we began to participate in a CIC grant through the Mellon Foundation um, to get humanities online. And so some of you guys, if you're from any of the CIC schools, will uh, know a bit about that. We had two people that were willing to participate. Um, one, uh, the philosopher in the gr group, Bernie Cantens, was absolutely 100% all in. He wanted to learn how to do the online. He was really um, going for it. He's also uh, an excellent online teacher now. The other person, I think, went into it to prove that it was going to be awful and you should never do it. Um, she has been since, since been um, convinced that it's not awful and that um, you should do it. We also then uh, set up a task force to 
talk about online teaching and to set some guidelines. This was an important move for us. Um, that was a, a probably a year-long process of setting up those guidelines. Um, we agreed to do it. We voted on those, and they sort of set the standards for us and set um, some parameters for online for us. Uh, we also um, then began to think about um, putting some particular programs online. This was at the urge, um, urging of our president. Uh, we started by looking at an OPM, and I think that's uh, in our next slide that I talk a little bit more about that. Um, we started looking at an OPM um, and eventually No, moved. it's here. Oh, it's here? Okay. Yep. Well, let me just take an extra minute or two sure. then from this side. So we began to talk about what it would mean to be online. And we worked with a very nice uh, company that um, came to us, talked to us about um, setting up uh, online programs. And we were looking at perhaps nursing, perhaps business, we didn't quite know. And uh, this was an OPM, uh, and this is a, a, a way of helping people build um, online programs that is more, in, in many ways, more structured and more contractually um, difficult for a school like us. So. We would, we would have to guarantee them a certain number of programs over the course of eight, ten years. Uh, the commitment was really long. We also felt like we would lose control over the courses and course development. It felt like we would, be, we would look like them rather than us. And Moravian College is deeply committed to its traditions, um, and so that wasn't working for us. We ended up talking to them for close to a year um, before we moved um, into agreeing as uh, even the president agreed that we we couldn't we couldn't work with them we, we just couldn't sort of sell our souls i guess in a way um and we chose not to so somehow or another i remembered him from running into him at a conference or whatever but i said to scott dams our um, now our vp for enrollment and marketing i said contact extension engine and let's talk to them about how they do this um, do this process so much of what we're going to talk about now is about what that process was like for us uh, and how that worked for us. Yeah, so it was great. Just it was great when I first started talking to them um, because th uh, they were really excited that they understood their alternatives. Right? They'd done an internal staffing um, uh, survey and whether they could do stuff or not, and they realized that they had a bunch of holes. I'm going to talk about that um, in, in a bit, and so will, so will Cynthia. But so we uh, started the exploration of the relationship, and I'll just let you take it from there. So we didn't have a capacity to do online courses ourselves. Individual faculty had some capacity to think about it, but we didn't have instructional designers, we didn't have um, educational technologists. Um, we, we figured that we would need them, but we really didn't even know um, what we would need. So when we started working with these guys, one of the things that um, was helpful to us is that because of the experience that you've had building programs elsewhere, um, they could ask us the hard questions, you know, give us, in a sense, um, a direction to go. Uh, one of the things that I think we also really learned from them is project management, and I'll talk about that off and on um, over the course of this um, while that we're together. Uh, and we really needed somebody that would be a project manager for it. Who's the responsible person for this? Who's going to keep it going? They also helped us think about how long it would take us to do course and program development. And I think a lot of faculty think that you can just, you take your course, you've got it, it might even be in Canvas, and you just move it into online and it's all good. But it doesn't work that way. And I think in many ways that's one of the things that makes it um, appealing to faculty later on when they recognize it's both pedagogically um, a different thing uh, and a valuable thing, and it's hard. And we kind of like things when they're hard. It makes them seem legitimate, right? So that was good. Um, they also helped us establish um, a variety of things, like what's a normal course stipend for the development of an online course, um, what kind of agreements do you have to have in terms of intellectual property, um, and also what kinds of internal capacity were we going to have to develop in order to su succeed at this, um, this effort. So they helped us with all of those things including minuscule questions about Canvas. Yeah, yeah we, um, uh, Scott Dams, the person who I worked with uh, a lot, um, when we first started the design and planning stage, which is, 
usually six to ten week engagement where we help figure things out what needs to be done uh, Scott was quite adamant and he'll agree now that he was maybe overly adamant that it would take two to three weeks no more because um, they really understood and it was gr it was a great uh, process of mutual discovery did that sound really really PC perfect um, <laughs> yeah so it was just understanding what you knew and what you didn't and what needed to be done and what hadn't been done and the decisions that need to be made the people that ne needed to be talked to and who you needed to hire and what organization you need to put together it was all it was all there and it's a it's a long process so the process of um, that we were going through and getting ready to go through uh, we talked from like November to basically March um, well actually it was more like till till mid January when we decided to uh, contract contracting always takes longer than you think it will so then that was you know another six weeks um, and then here we here we were in March and uh, then there's this process of designing what it is that they want it right it's not what we want it's we bring the expertise in online learning but we don't know who you are that's part of this process of, get, of going through the design processes what does success look like how are you going to measure it what's everyone agreed to in in many cases that what is everyone agreeing that needs to be done is one of the real values of bringing someone in to talk about these things that are difficult to talk about um, and to, to find out that all of these eight people all had a different vision of what success would look like and what needs to be done so we get that all written down and then we come up with this design and then after you we've talked about looked at your organization uh, what's your go-to-market plan for your marketing okay do you have it handled great fine let's see it what do you what's what's your vision um, or not okay so we might want to do that so that you have someone sitting in your virtual seats taking those virtual classes um, learning experience what's it gonna be like from the students point of view who is Moravian what is what is a Moravian course like what are your learning experiences like how do they typically get that in your face-to-face -face classes well we're not gonna film a play and call it a movie right it's gonna be different when you're when you're uh, online but that doesn't mean the outcomes can't be effective right and, and successful so what's that gonna be like technology architecture what technology do you have for marketing what technology do you have for uh, your classes what do you need figure it out and then the user experience so we do go through this whole design phase and then there's the building all right so we, we presented the, the plan and I'll get to that in a little bit and then they decide to, to go on um, so just to be clear to be clear we're not an OPM right so it's a month-to-month -month, uh, contract so you pay us to now you might sound this might sound somewhat familiar but you pay us to work and we work and you stop paying us and we stop working <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> pretty straightforward right um, so that's you know that's how I work um, so so then it's uh, you decide to continue because you're happy with us okay and we have two missions I'm going to come back to this over and over the first mission is to get your thing online whatever it is right to help you along that path there's all this work that has to be done two hardest things in academics hiring someone and firing someone right so it takes a while to get up to speed right so we help you fill in all the pieces uh, project management uh, learner experience creative video marketing strategy all this stuff right well eventually you'll be able to do it and that's pro that's mission two which is we want to build your capacity so that you can do it and we can work our way out of a job right so that we can walk away and you'll be able to run the program that's our goal sounds strange what do we get out of it we get a friend <laughs> and we get someone who will go to us for conferences and tell tell a story and provide good references that's what we're looking for we do not want to run your school we want you to run your school in your way and I got lots of nods when I was good there. oh good and were you smiling and nodding good <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so then we build and then we grow, right? And it can last as long as you need it to do. Build the classes, um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, and then build the technology if that's needed. Uh, we've designed the go-to-market strategy and execute the marketing if you need us to do that. 
We do that and then grow. All right, what are the results? Did you get the enrollments you wanted? Did the faculty, were they happy? Were students, were they happy? Oh, and by the way, if you want these slides, send me an email and I'll send it to you. Okay, just FYI. All right, so that's, that's us and that's what it's like to work with us, right? Um, and mind the capacity gap. This is what I'm gonna come back to. So there's the usual thing you think about when you work with a company that helps you go online. There's, well, do the courses, all right? Do the program. But then there's also all this other stuff that has to be done, which isn't always really obvious. Um, there's some of the stuff you can do and some of the stuff you can't do right now. And we help you think about what that organization feels like, looks like, what jobs should there be now and later. Um, and so you can build it over time. So you can handle all the business stuff so that it can pay for itself. Uh, again, we're not taking a cut of your revenue. You're just paying us to work. Just we send you a bill every month of the number of hours we worked, and there's a, there's a number and you have to pay. Um, but then after that, all the revenue is yours. And then capacity building, change management. I know I remember working with Scott about hiring um, videographers uh, and hiring uh, learner experience folks. We helped write the job descriptions so that they could go hire stuff. And of course that meant we were getting paid less, but whatever. We want you to be happy. That was always our goal. So that's what working with us, we talk about capacity gap. Um, at the end of the process of the design and planning stage, we presented this in July. Um, there, was, there was some time off because of vacation, so it really wasn't four months. Um, but it was all about, here's a plan. This is what it's gonna take. This is what you said that you wanted. And this is what we'll do. And this is what you are supposed to do. Right, so it was right there on table. And then an estimate, plus or minus 15%. We don't know exactly how much it's gonna be because you'll change your mind, right? And you'll say, we want something else, so. And that happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, a lot of things happened actually. So the, you've got the plan up there. Um, but we, what we ended up doing um, is hiring a couple of um, IDs, you know, instructional designers. We hired an ed tech. We didn't have any of this staff um, prior to our um, relationship with um, these guys. Um, and the plan that they shared with us was so um, complete and well worked out. And they, I think, did um, more in that planning stage than they had done in the past. We had worked um, with you specifically on a variety of details. And the detail and the clarity of these plans um, were critical in getting board support for the investment in this program. So one of the things that, uh, because of the, the work, this sort of discovery work that we did uh, with faculty, with staff, with your company, um, I was able to go to our president and the board with a fully fleshed out really complete set of um, proposals, um, goals, and costs. And we were able to convince them that it was worth a, a significant investment. Um, and the board uh, approved the significant investment and we've been working with them since. And I will say also um, that because of their flexibility, we've come in under budget um, in all the categories of work that we've done with them. So that's also um, been really helpful for us uh, and helpful for me in talking about continuing the relationship in other programs, which is um, what we'll talk about as well. It was really um, a complete plan, uh, very helpful and really compelling to the faculty as well. So they, they could really see what we were doing, what the costs were, what the investments were, um, what that meant in terms of new faculty hires, and there were a couple of those as well, um, in order to make this, this program work. Also, this was part of the process of choosing the program. Uh, we had two programs that we were considering um, when they came to us. One was in business, our master's in predictive analytics, and the other was in nursing. The faculty in the master's of predictive analytics were more invested and involved, and so that was the one that we went with first. Uh, and then now we're, we're talking nursing. Yep. So at the end of that stage, all right, so then they said yes. They went off for, for six weeks, 
and deliberated, you know, talking to the board, talk, well, talking to all the layers of the organization all the way up and all the way down, to however you want to go up and down. Um, uh, everyone needed to be talked with to make sure everyone was in agreement, and then they were, and then it was time to go. Well, it wasn't quite time to go. Um, there were a lot of uh, decisions at the administration level that needed to be made. So uh, basically I came up with this. A document with a list of questions and then Scott and I and it had to do with all of those things uh, and then so Scott and I got together every week and worked through another set of those questions uh, to help make sure that once it was time in January to start making creating courses that they would actually be ready to succeed not just create the courses that's something different than succeeding um, so then uh, I was working with Scott and then from your end um, I was working with the um, members of the business program business and economics program um, but also all kinds of the administrative staff so with our um, vice provost um, the deans um, working with um, the faculty generally you know you needed to make sure that they felt like this was a legitimate move within the context of our mission uh, and uh, I think that in the end they they feel it is um, still to this day it took some work and it took s there were some difficult points there at the beginning um, but we worked through all of those I think successfully uh, I think we're really happy with the product of um, the masters in predictive analytics it looks really great um, and I think also that we now have, I, I'm kind of skipping ahead as a historian. I probably shouldn't go back and forth in time, but I do it anyway. Um, so I had it all I laid know, out, sorry, past, I I present, to, future. I, to, I know. <laughs> um, you know, one of the, the philosophers that I just talked to you about a few minutes ago, he's going to be leading our online um, effort. Uh, he's going to be leading the um, online program development for adult and completion uh, degrees, but also for our graduate degrees. Really got invested in it. He's one of the most respected um, faculty members on our campus. He has been there a long time. Um, he's a, you know, a genuine faculty intellect. Uh, and once we had him on board fully in this way, and I think we've really crossed some kind of line here now. It's really, uh, we're in a really different place. All right, so, so then we start, we're going through this process. And we kept asking questions like, okay, so how do you envision your online experience? What, is, what do you think that'll be like? And we got lots of blank stares. Um, it wasn't that they didn't want to respond, it's just they didn't know what their choice set was. Um, and so in November, Kim, and I'm behind the camera here, <laughs> and then Cynthia, Scott, um, the names you've heard before or you see in front of you. Um, we went down to have an afternoon uh, session, workshop, on talking about the online experience. And so we met in this room and we were like locked in by him for the long, long time. Yep. Um, but there was food and, you know, beverages. <laughs> and I think somebody brought a lot of candy, which was probably a great idea, and a lot of post-it notes. Um, and so we sat together and just talked about what it is we envision for this program. And the faculty members and the two faculty members um, that you see in this picture um, are Liz Kleintop standing and then Katie Desiderio who's sitting. Um, they were both uh, early faculty members involved in, in the creation of these courses. Uh, Katie is our executive director for graduate studies in business and economics um, and oversees the online um, work in in business. So we sat there with post-it notes and with whiteboards and with pieces of paper um, thinking about what this should look like, what, you know, what is the vision for uh, Moravian online education. Um, we came up with a bunch of lovely little pithy sayings and we made coasters out of them. Uh, but more importantly, Thank you. Um, they, <laughs> came up with, <laughs> they came up with an idea for uh, the underpinnings of the courses that they would create for. Uh, the business program. Yeah, it was a great day. That was a was that fun. was a real was that was a real important day to yeah. get the faculty to yeah. tar start thinking about that. Yeah. Um, and then we had this on on campus celebration, which was the craziest thing that I'd seen because we hadn't it hadn't launched, right? I'd never I'd been involved with plenty of celebrations at the launch. Well, this was a good solid eight months early, as far as I was concerned. But from their point of view, it wasn't early. At Moravian College, it's never too early for a party. That's very important. The Moravians liked beer and they liked parties. Um, and so in the you know, ethos of the um, system, we decided to have one. But really, it was 
uh, we were at homecoming. Me and Scott Dams were talking at homecoming, and we, we ran into our board chair, Ken Rampola, and he pull out, he pulled out this big cigar. He was smoking a cigar, which is another thing. But anyway, so he's got this big cigar, and we're real excited. Scott and I are talking to him about, you know, thank you for being willing to invest in the online programs. We're really excited. We're going to have a celebration. And, and Ken said, no, you're not. You can't have a celebration until you've launched it or at least met some of the goals. And because this is my nature, I said, yes, we can, and we're going to. And so we did. So I talked to Brian about it, our president, and he agreed that a celebration seemed like a great idea. Ken did show up um, at the celebration, as did many of the other members of the board. Um, so we put together an on-campus celebration. All kinds of faculty came, and the, most of the people that you see there are faculty, and they're from faculty from all across the institution, not just in business econo and economics. Administrators were there, staff members were there, um, you guys were there, and we, Brian, I thought, did a really nice job of That's introducing, um, introducing what we were doing and why we were doing it, um, the president of our institution, uh, and we really had a lovely evening, and I think it also generated some excitement. Uh, but you'd been working for almost two years, at, at yeah. least from our perspective, you know, to get to this point. And there was a real commitment. Courses were going to be created. Okay, we've been talking, 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 filling out documents. Ooh, that's exciting stuff. But actual courses were going to be made. And I, I think, looking back, it just made a ton of sense yeah. to actually celebrate the crossing of that threshold. Yeah, and it was a big, I mean, think about us, 277 years old at the time or 76 years old at the time. Um, two years before, it was against the rules in the faculty handbook to do an online student evaluation. And we're embarking on a fully online program. It's, that's a lot of move, movement in a very little amount of time. Yeah, so we're basically up to the present now. So, um, so what we did was starting January, we started creating um, uh, courses with the faculty uh, for the Master of Science in Predictive Analytics. That's the MSPA. Um, on the left. So we, we started working on that and we essentially worked all of 2019 on courses but now we're essentially done and all those courses are being created and that doesn't mean we're done with all 12 courses or 16 or 27 or whatever it is. We did I think four or six mm -hmm. courses something like that um, and now it's been handed over. They've hired uh, learning experience, project management, uh, and they have vendors in the area that they do uh, for their video. Um, and we are checking in, doing some reviews of the courses uh, to make sure things aren't, not that they would go off the rails, <laughs> but just to make sure that they aren't. Um, so that's the MSPA. That was last year. And now really since uh, sometime in, I think it was November, we started doing the design and planning for uh, a nursing degree and working with a completely different set of um, faculty, right? And just staff and everything. Uh, and so that's been what we've been working on recently for the courses. Right, and we're really at the um, end of that discovery period, and so next week we'll be talking about um, what that um, looks like. And it is a really different group of faculty. Uh, in some cases, I think probably going to be harder to work with. In some cases, it's going to be much easier. We do have um, a harder? person. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be, you're going to do more courses if you do this. Okay. <laughs> There's, um, at least one faculty member who's started an online program at another institution. We didn't have that, you know, in the business program. Nobody had ever done anything yeah. in that. And so that, yeah. I think, is going to be a, a real advantage. And she's very committed to making this happen. Um, and the other thing that I guess I would um, say a little bit, I mean, we haven't really finished this discovery piece in the nursing, is that the proposal, as I'm seeing it develop, is very different than the proposal that um, they came to us uh, with for the Masters in Predictive Analytics, which says um, some good things to me about working with them. It's not only do we learn to build capacity, but so do they. And they respond, they've responded really well to the different personalities and the different needs of the different programs. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. But the other thing that's on that slide is revisions to um, other online courses. And we have a doctorate in athletic training, which is now um, online. Um, but the courses are being revised looking at 
um, the course is from the Masters in Predictive Analytics. So one of our instructional designers, David, has been uh, worked so closely with them on the predictive analytics that he's gone back and is working with all of the faculty in the Doctorate of Athletic Training program to redesign their courses to bring them up to the same standards that we have for the Masters in Predictive Analytics. They are looking really good, too. I just recently looked at them. Sweet. So very happy about that. Sweet. Good, good, good. Uh, an, another stream is related to marketing. So um, this really very much had to do with capacity on their end. So they had very similar to pretty much every school I've ever talked to, where you have a marketing department that's really good at go team school stuff, but in terms of putting virtual butts and virtual seats le for specific <laughs> programs, uh, less good thinking about how to do that. Uh, and not just less good, but just they're busy. Right? They're not sitting around with 30% of their day, nothing going on. Um, so uh, we came in and basically we had a plan. And they're like, hey, that looks like a great plan. And we said, well, we can execute it. And they're like, well, fantastic. And so we did. Um, but then after that, then we got to be uh, involved in doing the marketing for all their graduate programs. Uh, again, it was just the capacity. We had the results and then they're like, well, these people aren't so bad, and decided to work with us, and uh, we've we've helped them take their marketing their their name out into the world. And that's been very successful for us. I'm not a marketing person, as you can imagine. I'm a classical archaeologist, so I wouldn't be a marketing person. But um, it is um, <laughs> the case that all of our graduate programs have increased in numbers, in every single solitary one of them since this marketing has begun. So and just to be clear, that's what they wanted. Yes, that is what we right. wanted. Yeah, that's we absolutely. We don't care. I'll say that for the millionth <laughs> time. We, we just want you to succeed. Yeah. So, and you, I don't know how many, you know, small private schools we have in the room here, um, but if you are one, you know that there are demographic pressures on us at the undergraduate level, which has been a very important, um, you know, we're, we're tuition driven um, uh, in the same way that many of you are. Um, and while that demographic is difficult, um, either not growing, you know, staying stable, or decreasing, um, our the importance of our graduate programs and our adult programs um, are financially significant for us. And so far, this is this has worked in the ways that we had hoped it would um, to give some stability to our budget. Uh, and then the the third. Third stream is related to organizational and um, leadership, and I'll take you the uh, let you take the rest. That's right that's Jerry, who's also here in this Raise audience. Raise your hand. So um, <laughs> all of the stuff that you were ta uh, we were talking about, um, all of these changes, and I think if you take away nothing else, you'll take away that Moravian College has undergone some pretty dramatic changes over the course of just a few years, which is not a natural state of happiness for faculty. Um, nor staff, for that matter. The changes were significant. So there was a lot of stress. We also had some troubles in one unit um, with the management of one uh, particular unit that was very closely aligned with all the other stuff that we were doing. Um, there were all these organizational changes, and as we developed these other capacities, we needed people to manage those things, and so we were giving people titles like, you know, director or executive director or this or that, um, and so it felt like we were getting more administrators, and it was just very stressful. So uh, I was at another meeting, um, uh, I can't, it was an Educause meeting, um, when the, the person that I just mentioned um, resigned um, long distance on the phone. I got the phone call. I'm standing there at their booth, and I get this phone call. And I went, oh my God, <laughs> you know, this person just resigned. Um, now what? And so the stress has just increased. And um, we asked Jerry to come in and help us uh, work through the organizational stresses that we were feeling. Uh, there, there have been changes since um, the report that he shared with us, but uh, I think just the fact of bringing um, him in, that expertise in organizational management, um, helped people. That's like there was somebody there listening to them that they were upset about this or they were stressed by that or they didn't feel heard about this or they wanted to move um, in that direction. Um, he met with faculty, he met with staff, he met with all kinds of people. Um, and we are still um, responding to the report that he shared for us. Uh, and in fact, he one of the things he said was that there were two things that we needed. One was um, some kind of manager of the online project. Another was a, a manager of the the 
corporate and other partnerships, academic partnerships, and in the report, and I don't know that you remember this, you said they will emerge, and they have done so. Um, they have both um, emerged, and we're working on that now. So that's really been, uh, that, was a help, that was just an added bonus um, help uh, to us, and it's made, uh, I actually don't know that I have fewer direct reports, but, <laughs> but there's more sense to the ones that I have, and so that's been, that's been helpful. Uh, so, um, future. So we're, like I said, we're we're wrapping up uh, the course creation, and really, it's it's been wrapped up, uh, so that Moravian is doing the work. We've helped uh, all along make sure that they're, the faculty who are coming into the program know what they're in for, what the experience is like, uh, know that what they're uh, what they're going to have to do. It's going to be work. Um, and then how they're going to be supported and where they can go for questions. And then continue to do whatever's needed. Uh, you know, it, it might be that we're done, and it might not be that we're done. It's always about um, whatever, whatever you need um, and continuing to support that way, just like Jerry's uh, engagement uh, just sort of arose because that was what needed to be done. Um, and uh, it was at, at her request that we came in to do that. And, uh, for all I know, he'll get called in later. We get, we might do more marketing, we might do less. It's always just, uh, it's an evolving up and down kind of uh, relationship and that's how, that's how we are. And now, challenges and lessons learned, which and is always the most fun. So that list of challenges, you all know those. Every one of you knows those. Whatever it is you're doing on your campuses right now, those are all the things, right, that we're dealing with all the time. And, you know, we are, we are a faculty with a very, you know, set of old traditions, um, a deep love of the face-to-face -face experience, s small liberal arts college, even with the other aspects to it, the relationships are critical, relationships with, uh, between faculty and students, um, between faculty and faculty, um, between faculty and staff and administrators, the relationships are absolutely critical. And so it was a lot of, um, important work to do uh, to make sure that the faculty understood um, exactly what we were facing, exactly why we were facing it, um, and the, the role that they had to play in that. And so that's that's just an that's an ongoing thing, right? That's not something that okay got their trust all done now. Um, it's a, a continuing thing. I don't know how many of you were at the um, keynote uh, by the uh, president. Um, who talked just now about um, th the importance of trust. Uh, and so that was something that was very important. Also doing new stuff. You all know we're at a moment in higher ed where change happens faster than we're all comfortable with. Um, many of us, especially in my age group, you, you went into this job thinking that you, you, know, you had a mission, you were gonna do these things, you're gonna help students. You, you went into it knowing you were going to get paid less money too because there was going to be a stability to it right it was going to be it's going to be solid and that stuff is no longer the case um, there isn't the same kind of stability to it there that there was when i when i started and when many of you started so changing what does that mean and how does that look and, and it'll be different on each of your campuses uh, finding the money there's always a challenge that was a challenge for us um, and that was uh, something that we needed the board to be fully committed to and then this isn't something that you just do, the faculty do alone. Um, this is something that every part of the organization, every part, including student affairs, the business office, um, institutional technology, uh, informational technology, the you know, enrollment team, you name it, um, everybody was involved in it. Yes. And so making sure that everybody became uh, a part of it. You can't over communicate. That's one of the things that I have learned um, in my job generally, but also um, in this process. Yes. You just can't. There's no way to do it. Um, you also do need support from the highest levels of your administration. Obviously, you need the support of the faculty. Without that, it simply won't happen. But on the other end, that's true as well. It won't happen if you don't have the administrative and board support for that. So effective communication. It's really critical. And so in order to communicate effectively, you have to actually know what you're talking about. So you really need to plan carefully. You have to have the details. And we did. We had those details. Yeah, so um, the, the project management portion of it and the engagement management portion of it. So I'm, as the, 
you can call me sales, you can call me business development, you can call me engagement manager, but please call me. Um, so <laughs> I'll be here all week. Um, so, but really I'm talking to Scott uh, every week to, to make sure that I hear stuff on my side and he hears stuff on his side. We're not doing the work, but we're hearing about the work and making sure that that's good and that I know about other stuff that's happening at, happening at Moravian. I'm also talking to Cynthia um, at, at different times. Um, and then Scott is, was also the marketing guy at that time. And so I was getting the story about marketing. So there's this, this level uh, that's going on, but then there's the project manager who's talking uh, daily, every other day. Uh, then there's the uh, instructional designer working with faculty every day, all the time. You know, so there's all these touch points and we're talking to each other and they're talking to each other, but then we're talking across. There's no way to, to talk enough because I would hear stuff that she didn't know about and she's like, really? And so, <laughs> but then it would happen back the other way too. And so we could address these things, right? Every relationship, we would have troubles, right? And they would have troubles, we would have troubles, but you're talking, you're talking. And, and just making sure it works. I think through most of the process, we talked every other week. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I was talking to Scott every week. Yeah. Yeah. So. If there were still speed dial, he would be on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so that's really the end of that. I wanted, before I forgot, I want to let you know I have um, this uh, a, a paper I wrote, white paper on defining your own strategy at your organization. If you want it, come up here, give me your business card, and you can have it. Or send me an email and I'll send you the PDF, but it's really expensive to print color, so. So yeah, take, one. Yeah. take one, yeah. So, but questions. Yeah, questions. Yeah. Great story, congratulations on your success. Thanks. Um, and who are you? So my name is Ern Von Barson and I'm at Westminster College. Oh, I, yeah. Um, great story, thank you. Um, I'd like to know a little bit of the backstory to all this. One thing that wasn't clear from both your comments is what was the primary Was it enrollment challenges <coughs> and the desire to augment revenues primarily? Was it primarily um, to add another pedagogical dimension uh, to, your, to your program programmatic offerings uh, that you felt would enhance your mission? Um, what you know? What, what is the backstory? The backstory is our president. So the president um, of Moravian College is Brian Grigsby. He is. Uh, an alum, actually, of Moravian College. Um, but one of the things he also is, is somebody who's very, very engaged in um, the context of higher ed. So very well um, versed in the challenges that we're facing. He wanted us to go online and he wanted us to go into new graduate programs because he felt like that was going to be um, what we needed to do in order to be sustainable for the long term in the future. So this was his idea, which, as you all know, is playing out in real time for us. Um, he also has, um, just like the institution had, an access mission. And if you think about adult um, learners, going to Moravian College at 8 a.m. for a class is not going to be the way that they're going to succeed. They need online. And we didn't have that to offer them. And in order to achieve that part of our mission, which is which is in our mission and in our history, um, if we didn't go online, we wouldn't be able to achieve that. So it was mission driven, um, but it was also about long-term financial stability and sustainability for a smaller college in an extraordinarily competitive environment and in Pennsylvania on top of that. So if any of you guys have been doing reading, you know that Pennsylvania has really suffered. Think about the, the schools, in, there's a jillion of them for, in the first place. So. So, yeah. So, did you add capacity with this online or, or shift? Because I'm wondering how you dealt with the staffing. If you had to hire a bunch of we hired. We, we hired two IDs, um, instructional designers. We also hired an uh, educational technologist. So, we hired so three staff people. We also hired, um, uh, we're actually in the process of hiring a, a new member um, of the faculty for the master's in predictive analytics. So, we are also adding faculty, not as uh, not as many as we added staff, but we are adding faculty too. So, Kathleen Hammond from Evergreen State Hi. College. Louder. Oh, 
Oh, louder, just no. louder. Oh, just yeah. louder. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, my question also was about sort of faculty retooling. So, if you didn't do a lot of hiring, you must have done a lot of faculty development. And when you were doing that, did you give people course releases? Was it done in the summer on paid time? What, what Cash. Cash. We gave them money. Yeah, so we gave the money. Uh, so that was, uh, that was because, you know, we, we have a limited supply of time. We have a limited supply of money, but um, they're compelled by that, um, as we all are. Right. And we would ask that they not have, you know, if they're teaching a six-course load, don't have it be their four-semester, right? You know, when they're teaching four, right? They don't so, have a four-semester. Well, but yes, I just, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is, know that it's, you know, that they have to sleep and all these things. And whether you give them money or not, they still need space to think because this is hard. They're having to recreate, think about pedagogies that they hadn't thought about before in many cases. Yeah. Yes. Um, an online conductor program? Sort of online, but it also has, like, it's kind of an alternative delivery model. Some of it's so. online and some of it is on campus. I don't think so. I don't okay. think it is Moravian. No. Although we do have um, directing conductor yeah, adjuncts yeah. that might be working in a variety of programs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's that one, and um, I was wondering if actually you had, you had worked on developing, but I guess maybe not. But it's really interesting. It's really interesting. Uh -huh. um, and so it has like 40 students, which is sort of a lot. For that yeah, program. absolutely. One of, the, um, um, one of the few that's online, and that's why he took it. He was a music major when he was college mm -hmm. and wanted a music master's, and so this is the one that he chose. Um, but the online was an appeal mm -hmm. um, because he's a working adult, um, plus just mm -hmm. the other delivery format. Of, so when they have to come to campus for a week, I guess, so that could be a vacation. So anyway, it was a really smart program. Great. So I was gonna I'm going to look into it now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, also, um, and also you as well, if you would work on it. But, it's, but I think that's another way to go. Yep. Instead of going fully online, is to have... And oh, we, yeah, blended. Oh, yeah, blended. Absolutely. Yeah. And Absolutely. We're, we've talked a lot about that, um, about programs that are not quite ready to go fully online, doing some sort of blended, um, blended approach. Yeah, the nursing Absolutely. will probably end up being that way at some level. Yeah. Um, Sure. Yep. Having the online discussion experience with the, with the students and looking at their projects and things like that will actually communicate with these for that week um, and you know have this intensive. I actually did. Mm -hmm. I did an online um, postgraduate certificate in enrollment leadership, mm -hmm. and um, I did it through USC in California, and it was and I wasn't there, and it was. It's fully online, but we went out there three times, um, once in the fall, once um, over the break, um, the winter break, and then um, once in the spring. So we got to meet one another. And that was really, it was, it was helpful. It wasn't blended, but it was, um, it was a, a wonderful opportunity to see the faces in real life. Yeah. yeah. I would encourage all of you to think about when you're thinking about going online or doing online or putting a program online, whatever you want to however you want to phrase it, to think about not just the courses, but the uh, sort of adjunct courses, right? Adjunct to the, to the actual academic experience. Uh, connections to um, alumni, connections to career services, connections to the local community, what are connections to each other, connections to mentors. So whatever it is, don't just think about the course, the in-course experience. Think about the whole, the whole experience. We always think across our teams, we think in terms of what's that experience? And what's true to you? And that's how you can differentiate, and that's where you're authentic in the market. Those programs do, tend to do better. But also, then someone mentioned that pedagogical dimension, it, it tends to then enrich what's happening, and uh, it, it, it tends to then have this trickle down effect, which is so important and, and really going to continue to make it an end of the Yep. You had a question? Yeah. Um, I'm wondering.
what you found out informed the process and informed your relationship? We did talk to um, graduate students, and we had some beta testers in those early classes um, that did help us. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Got to do that. Yeah. The better, the the bigger, better, more accurate those people are, the the better the whole program will be. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Can you say a bit more about uh, the statistics, what kind of student population, how you grew as a result of doing this? Well, so we, um, we have, I'll tell you what our graduate programs are. So we have, um, and this, these started when I got there, AT, OT, speech pathology, we built those. We're about to start PT. We'll start enrolling those um, in the um, summer. We have also um, several master's programs in business and economics. Those already existed. We have master's programs and completion programs in nursing. Those already existed. And we have master's programs um, in education, and those already existed. Now They're the all like 20 to 40? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. Um, additional. Additional so students. Additional we have additional actual butts and seats and virtual butts and seats. So there are, you know, in some programs more than others, the adult com um, completion programs where, you know, we maybe have a dozen more than we had before. So that's not yet numbers that are really um, in th we're enthusiastic about. But when we set up, for example, the um, athletic training, occupational therapy, and speech pathology, um, we did our business plans. Um, there's a there's a level to the, or a limit to the cohorts in those programs that are established by the crediting agencies. So that's not something that we can trifle with. And for example, in CAPD for physical therapy, they won't even let you um, admit more than five, more than their cap. So our original plans, or you know, our targets were lower than the cohort caps, but we've met the cohort caps in all of those programs. So that's been significant for us. Okay, we have to be done now. Okay. Have to Although let you go. I can answer a question. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. to you. Okay, great. Thank you very much Thanks. for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah.